This is a bit odd because Giganotosaurus was about 30 million years before T-Rex. So they would never have met in real life and they lived on different continents. Yeah, not so sure about that. Hi, my name's Joe. I'm a paleontologist at the Natural History Museum and the University of Bath. And I'm going to be watching the Jurassic World Dominion prologue. So this, uh, to me, looks like a very large uh, type of pterosaur called an ash darkid. And this one in particular is probably what they're going for is a Quetzalcoatlus, uh, which is the largest of the ash darkids that we know of. And its behavior looks really good to me. It's coming swooping in, so gliding less than it would be flapping. And in the background, the others are kind of walking on all four limbs, despite having these membrane wings that they've got. And we know that the Quetzalcoatlus probably spent quite a lot of time more on land than at sea. So some of the other pterosaurs we know fed from the sea while whilst in flight, but we know that these larger ones were more terrestrial and probably ate other small dinosaurs, lizards, tiny mammals, things like that. So it looks that they've given the pterosaurs in this version some sort of fiber coating on their body. And now the pterosaurs didn't have feathers, as we know birds had today, but they were sort of a, a sister relative of them and way back then. So they would have had some sort of coating on their body, not fur, not feathers, kind of something, an early relative of those two things. So this is uh, an oviraptor or egg thief. As uh, you can see there, what it's doing is eating an egg. So this is a very uh, classic kind of misconception with the oviraptor. It got a lot of bad press when it was first discovered. So its name literally means egg thief. And it was discovered next to a clutch of, of broken eggs. We assumed, or paleontologists then assumed that um, it ate eggs and it would steal other dinosaurs' eggs to survive, uh, which wouldn't be unheard of. You know, a lot of um, lizards and reptiles, they, they do eat eggs. Subsequent finds have shown that the oviraptor was actually sitting on its own clutch of eggs. It wasn't eating other dinosaurs' eggs, it was actually caring for its own eggs. So it sadly got a, a bad press, but I, li I like the way they've given it full coating of feathers and a full sort of bushy tail feather. That is accurate from what I, from what I know. Kind of forged this narrative of there being you know, goodies and baddies in dinosaurs and nature in general, different groups of animals can be perceived as, as good or bad. To us, they're just animals. There's no such thing as a, an evil animal or a good animal, they're just doing animal things. Some dinosaurs would have probably fed from eggs. That doesn't mean that they're, they're nasty. It's just the, the thing that they've evolved to eat, you know. We have to be careful that we don't just portray them as heroes and villains. And it's just, we try and focus more on, on the nature aspect of it. Oh, nice. Okay, so these these are some Ceratopsians. It looks like, um, Nesutoceratops to me. So you can tell it's a Nesutoceratops from the kind of styling of its of its frill around its head and the direction its horns are pointing. I noticed one of them had got a broken horn there. We know that they, they would probably have used these in mating displays or for for fighting, kind of like, like rutting stags would. Uh, so this is quite cool. It shows them migrating much like buffalo and other herds of animals do today as well. So that's a cool touch. <laughs> wallowing around in the water as well. That's nice. So that looked to me like uh, Moros Intrepidus, which is one of the newest dinosaurs that we've named. It's a really, really small little theropod meat-eating dinosaur. And it was good to see that they've given it a full coating of feathers once again, as most of these dinosaurs would have. Cleaning the teeth of this larger animal, which we're about to see. Why not? Um, a lot of smaller animals do that. We can see that with uh, crocodiles today. Some species of bird will go and pick the bits of meat out of the uh, out of the teeth of the crocodiles. So perfectly reasonable as far as I'm concerned. We probably find on average, and this has been an average 
about of about the same amount for the last 20 or so years one dinosaur a week on average so this is maybe a bit misleading so it, it's not always a new one that's been dug up it can be stuff that's already in a museum that's been named maybe things have been split that were usually one species and they've been pulled apart on average a new dinosaur is named once a week every year for the last 20 30 years since the 90s it's always a nice event for paleontologists you know because we we like to know the true amount of dinosaurs that existed if we can so this is one of uh, my favorite dinosaurs this is an um, iguanodon a large herbivorous dinosaur from the Cretaceous. It had these thumb spikes on the end of its thumbs, which it would use for defense uh, and maybe for like digging around in the ground to dig up plants. But one of my favorites and the one that I've done the most work on uh, in my career so far. It looks to me like there's a, a Giganotosaurus which is one of the largest uh, predator theropod dinosaurs that we know about. I can see where this is going. Um, it looks like it's going to have a fight with here a T-Rex. This is a bit odd because Giganotosaurus was about 30 million years before T-Rex. So they would never have met in real life and they lived on different continents. Yeah, not so sure about that. Interestingly, they've given the T-Rex some sort of fluffy feathery coating, which is brilliant to see because that's exactly how we think it would have looked. Probably had a bit more than that, to be honest. I guess they don't want to deviate too much from what we expect the T-Rex to look like. It also looks to me like they've improved the positioning of its arms slightly. One of the main things that they got wrong in the earlier films was the positioning of uh, dinosaur arms and hands. They would certainly have been more to the side instead of kind of held out in front of them. And uh, it looks like they've addressed that a little bit as well here. That's definitely a Giganotosaurus, you can tell from the, the shape of its skull. Oh, it's gonna kill a T-Rex, isn't it? T-Rex always gets it killed in the later films. So I'm guessing that that is the mosquito that bites the T-Rex that then leads to the Jurassic Park T-Rex. Um, Rexy, I think they call it. <laughs> it's sad that the T-Rex got killed so easily. It got killed in Jurassic Park 3 by the Spinosaurus and it got killed in, in this prologue by uh, the Giganotosaurus as well. It can't catch a break. Like I said, they would never have met in real life anyway. So it's kind of artistic license. It's perhaps hinting that 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 mosquito is the one that they found and brought the T-Rex back with. In reality, you know, these mosquitoes are going to go from one animal to the next and have a little drink from each one. So if we did find one that did have blood in, it would be a mix anyway. And without knowing kind of the genetic code of the animal, we wouldn't be able to know which which one it was from. Um, so it would be like this soup of blood and it, it, it probably wouldn't be that helpful. I mean, the blood inside a mosquito isn't going to survive 65 million years, sadly. So um, <laughs> it's cool. It's a cool concept. I like it, but yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it looks like all the dinosaurs in this uh, prologue were kind of from the Cretaceous period. So the Cretaceous period is a really, really long period of time. It was about 80 million years. Some of these dinosaurs were from the beginning of the Cretaceous and some were from the very, very end of the Cretaceous. So Iguanodon was from about 125 million years ago. And that was next to a Giganotosaurus, which was from about 90 something million years ago, which was fighting a T-Rex, which was from 65, 66 million years ago. So you can see they were all separated by tens of millions of years. So they probably would have never have met in real life. I don't know much about filmmaking, but I would say from their point of view, they're trying to show a generalized impression of what the Cretaceous period was like, where they would have lived, looks perfectly reasonable to me. The continents were still moving around in different positions to what they are now. So there'd be a whole variety of different environments for the dinosaurs to live in. Um, but yeah, it's it's the time scale, which is the which is the issue. Yeah.
Oh, back to present times. I presume so that's the uh, the same T Rex that was let let loose at the end of the uh, the second Jurassic World film. Just no one, no one noticed. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is a a scared animal who doesn't know doesn't know where it is or what's going on. You can't really can't really blame it. You'll notice that this version of that T-Rex doesn't have a coating of feathery fluff over its body. So either that's something that they might explain in the film, and um, we'll have to wait and see. Originally, they maybe wouldn't have known back when they made the original Jurassic Park films, but they know now. So it'll be interesting to see how they how they balance that. The joining sort of part of skin between the upper and lower jaw, yeah? So some dinosaurs had cheeks, and some some didn't. There's also a debate over whether they had lips as well. So a lot of those soft body parts, unfortunately, we'll we'll never know. I would say what what we based that on is modern animals today. Crocodiles, for example, have this bit of fleshy material in between the upper and lower jaw, and it just just joins them together. They don't have true cheeks like we would have covering. Their teeth are exposed. Crocodiles and alligators also don't have lips. There's a big debate in paleontology over whether dinosaurs have lips or not. Um, I don't really mind, personally, um, but um, some people really care about that. So I think this is probably an interpretation based on examples we can see today, um, which we just have to make those jumps sometimes. It, it feels a little bit different to the, the previous films. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing how they translate this sort of footage of a bit more realism and some more recent discoveries into those more modern in the film dinosaurs um, that they've got. So it'd be really cool to see how they how they strike a balance between the actual science and the, the creations. I am looking forward to the film. I think it looks really cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. If you're in the mood for more videos like this one, make sure to check our dinosaur expert reacting to Monster Hunter Rise or the Jurassic World Dominion Prologue.